heard the minister, you got a sense of what's happening across the world and in India. Let me raise some big questions. Is India really prepared for the COVID-19 battle, as the minister claims? Will travel curbs block COVID-19? Is the screening at airports working? Is quarantine the best way to stop COVID-19? Will the summer and rising temperatures kill coronavirus? Does India need to do more? Just some of the questions I'll raise tonight. I'm joined by Amirullah Khan, former policy advisor at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and someone who's tracked public health issues for years. Dr. Gagandeep Kang is a Translational Health Science and Technology Institute in uh, Faridabad. Also joining me is Professor Dr. Naveen Dang, founder and chairman of Dr. Dang Labs. Appreciate all of you joining us. Let me come to you, Dr. Kang, first as someone who's looking at this issue closely with your Health Science and Technology Institute. Were you reassured with, when you heard Harshwardhan, the minister a short while ago, claim that India has the situation fully under control? Do you believe that the Indian public health system is adequately equipped to tackle coronavirus? The government has invested tremendously in doing a lot to prepare for the coronavirus. But I think that it is very feasible that we may be in a situation that is similar to many other countries like the US and like Iran, mm -hmm. where there might be disease circulating that we don't know about that could have come in before the measures that are currently being used for screening were put in place and also because people who are pre-symptomatic may not be picked up by such screening approaches. So this is an evolving disease. There is new information coming out every day. I don't think that we know everything about it. And when you don't know as much as we don't know about coronaviruses, it's very hard to say confidently that we are completely prepared. But you know, the government is doing things that are in the right direction. Doing things in the right direction. You mentioned screening specifically. Amirullah Khan, given the fact that this is an evolving uh, uh, disease in a way, new facts coming out all the time, do you believe that this, the screening processes, the, the systems need to be even more geared up? Given the scale of the challenge, the fact that more and more countries are finding more and more cases now coming out every day. Uh, yes, Rajdeep. You know, we have been fortunate that we haven't got many cases yet. But that doesn't mean that we are not up there facing the storm. Uh, it is not a question of if India will go, is going to get affected. It is a question of when and how much. And therefore, you see, what has happened is that we have been, if you, uh, if you heard what the minister said, uh, it is a reiteration of the same thing that we've been hearing for a while which is, you know, on one hand, it is mature in the sense that we don't want people to get scared or panicked. But on the other hand, it suggests that we are not yet ready to uh, face up to the issue that it is going to be a problem. You know, in such cases, it is always best to be over-prepared. Mm -hmm. we, we survived the earlier swine flu and Nipah just because we overdid it. Polio is another case. And therefore, in this case also, uh, we need to see some urgency and that urgency is missing. It seems to be as if that we are sure that we have a great health system, that we will ramp up a few more labs and we'll be ready. That's not the case. We have to accept that we have a broken health system. We haven't been able to do much about our health systems in any case. And now with, uh, with cases getting reported everywhere, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not surprising that the cases are getting reported in Kerala, Hyderabad and Delhi, which are the better places. Uh, God forbid if this happens in UP and Bihar, then we will have no way of taking it forward. So my, 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 my major point is mm -hmm. that I think we are we are not taking it as seriously as we should be. Yes. You know, given, and, and, given, and, and if you allow me, I'm saying that yes. Go ahead. Know, the, the response that we are seeing. Go ahead. Yeah, the response that we are seeing is is really state-led, and in this in this case, 
it cannot be state led it cannot be that the state takes entire uh, the entire responsibility and says we are we are taking control don't worry we have, we have it all uh, ready with us they it it is very important for the state now to involve the private sector and particularly to involve the communities this kind of an infection has to be fought at the community at the civil society level and you don't see any mention of that yet you know Naveen Dang, in a way, you're a founder and a chairman of Dr. Dang Labs. You just heard what Amirullah Khan said, that you need to involve communities, you in, need to involve the private sector as well. I asked the minister about whether there were enough laboratories. He claimed there were. He said there were 15. There would be 15 in place by tomorrow. Do you believe that's enough, given the scale of the country, 15 laboratories for testing coronavirus? Rajdeep, I beg to differ with the Honorable Health Minister. Yes, I do agree that the government is doing the best under circumstances that it could have. The kind of a country we have, the big country, the vast population, but the time has come that the private sector has to be involved. My memory goes back to 2009. I remember that time when H1N1 came, there was again a sense of panic. But now, at least I assure you, there should be no panic among our countrymen. We should get prepared. The mm -hmm. private sector needs to be involved into it, must be involved into it. After all, all of us are working towards one common goal, that is patient care. Now, the first point of contact for any patient who falls sick, as you know, for most of the patients, I'll say, is the private sector. When they go to the private sector, if a test is to be asked for, to tell them to ask and contact a government helpline, mm -hmm. then to go to a government hospital and get them tested out there, sometimes this is kind of a mental block. Not to say that there's anything wrong with the government hospitals. The government hospitals are fantastic. They're very good. All of us are products of government hospitals themselves. I fully endorse what the health minister said, but the private sector labs have to be involved. I remember that time the government asked which are the private sector labs which have got BSL 2 to 3 facilities. Mm -hmm. The few of us who were available. They said, how long will it take to set, uh, to set up the st testing facilities? I think few of us said within a few days. And that is exactly what happened. The government gave the mandate, mm -hmm. they gave the guidelines, they gave us testing facilities. Our facilities were uh, tested by the government authorities. They saw what kind of infrastructure they ha we had, they saw what kind of manpower we had, they saw what kind of training we had. Few of our people were taken, taken to in CDC, were trained out there. They sent us few bl random blind samples for us to be tested and cross-checked. And once all these hurdles, and, and right mm -hmm. hurdles, once they were cleared, then they gave us the mandate to start testing. And as you know what has happened since then, since 2009 to 2020, I'll say, the H1N1, swine flu, H3N2, whatever the influenza A viruses have been there, have been tested very well, very successfully, satisfactorily in the private sector. Okay. So the government has to increase the bandwidth, and that bandwidth can be increased only by involving all of us under the same umbrella. Interesting that you're using the parallel of what happened with H1N1 in 2009 and saying some of the lessons need to be repeated or some of the lessons you all learned there need to be replicated in some way in 2020. Dr. Kang, there's also this reports coming in that as temperatures rise, as summer comes, possibly the virus will be contained. Do you go along with that or do you believe that is also premature to suggest that with the onset of summer, the virus will be almost automatically contained? This is a new virus, and there is a lot we don't know about it. It would be premature to say that. Mm -hmm. We do know that for many respiratory infections, they tend to be less in the summer. Mm -hmm. Some of that is to do with the temperature and the humidity sensitivity of the viruses. Mm -hmm. But it's also to do with how much people congregate and where. So in this case, I would prefer to wait. And now that we have the virus mm -hmm. being grown in culture, many of these experiments that are trying to predict how long the virus will survive in the environment have already started to be done. There isn't a definitive result yet, but mm -hmm. we should know fairly soon. But this is complicated by the fact that when the virus spreads, it's it spreads in a protective material made out of mucus and fluid from people who are coughing and sneezing. Right. So 
also influences how long the virus survives in the environment. You know, I, I, Aminullah Khan, just take a look at what happened with the patient who's tested positive in Telangana. He was apparently then taking a bus from Bangalore to Telangana. There were others sharing that space with him. Now there are efforts to identify those individuals, quarantine them. Is that the big concern about the fact that in a country as vast as India, actually tracking down people who may possibly be infected is going to be a big challenge? That if there is one person out there who's taking a bus ride from Bangalore to Telangana, he's, got, he's tested positive for coronavirus, but the people he's come in contact with are all susceptible. Just the scale of what you're dealing with, with in a large country like India, 1.3 billion makes it that much more difficult. Absolutely true, Rajdeep. You know, uh, one reason why we haven't seen uh, too many cases is because our exposure to China is not as high as the exposure that Italy or Iran or South Korea have. Mm -hmm. So we've had, you know, lesser number of people traveling from there. But those who have traveled, they have now gone across the country. One of them is this gentleman. And therefore, they have missed the, missed the, the airport. In, in that in a sense and therefore to track them again get them back see who they have been in contact with is going to be an absolutely impossible task even at the airport you see one of the problems that we have is that the kind of screening that we do the thermal screening at best captures 50 percent at worst about 80 percent people get away you might be having uh, some symptoms you might be having the virus but thermal screening is not a foolproof method and if that's the only thing we are doing and the only thing we are doing at airports and some airports then we are uh, you know open to a lot of threats that is why some of us are really uh, concerned that it is not enough for india to say that we've got our uh, doctors out there we've got airports monitored we are looking at people coming from iran and uh, china that might not be enough as 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 dr dang also said that you know it's important for us to ensure that the large number of people understand what this is and to and to prepare them for it it is important to start talking about it i'm i'm really happy that you have started this that you know on prime time we discussed this issue uh, but no nobody else seems to be worried about this it is it, it was only yesterday that the prime minister spoke about it for the first time it's something we should have done uh, two months ago because it is it is a disease that if it spreads mm -hmm. and 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 goes then to the next level where it starts transmitting from human to human we are going to have a problem and how are we going to contain that with the kind of health system that we are dr dang as someone who gets hundreds of patients every day of you know suffering from different kinds of ailment what would you advise them if someone today has a cough or is sneezing uh, a running nose would you advise them immediately to go to a laboratory for testing no no not at all mm -hmm. that will create an unnecessary panic this season when we are experiencing lots of so-called common flu we are having influenza virus infection also you i do not recommend anybody having coughing and sneezing or respiratory infection to go in for screening or for testing for coronavirus no definitely not it should only be for a person who has had a contact history of contact with a person of coronavirus or a person with a history of travel or who has got some other very serious symptoms or who is immunocompromised anyway and has been in contact or a part of a large community then only yes. Telling patients to go and get themselves tested will create an unnecessary burden on the government, on the medical faculties. It is best that the patients are firstly like Amanullah Khan right now said, they are educated. The crux to success of any program is education and creating awareness. When the patients are educated and aware, there's nothing to panic. So once they're cautious and they know that self hygiene, personal hygiene, mm -hmm. not to be shaking hands while coughing and sneezing, to cover their face with their hands folded, to see to it that not to go to crowded places. Even when Holi is coming, I recommend that do not play Holi in large gatherings to try and restrict air travel try and restrict train travel, to try and restrict unnecessary travel, unnecessary contact, right. unnecessary being in crowded places, 
that is enough. But no unnecessary testing. Testing okay. only when it is advised by medical personnel. Wonderful to have three expert voices on this subject, giving us a sense, bringing a sense of sanity to what is happening around us on coronavirus. The message is very clear. We need to take all precautions without spreading panic. Dr. Kang, Dr. Dang, Amirullah Khan, I appreciate all three of you joining me this evening on the news today. We will continue to track coronavirus in all its various manifestations, getting expert voices on the news today. Hello everyone, this is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.